Hello everyone and welcome back! In the last lesson we saw how to handle a mongoose schema validation error whenever we are processing an HTTP request in our Nest.js backend and that request contains some data that when we try to add it or update it on the database it ends up triggering a mongoose error that we then handle with our fallback exception filter. Now we would like to take our validation a step further for that specific type of errors, validation errors from our input data, we would like to instead of letting the execution logic of the backend reach the point where the data is trying to get inserted into the database, let's instead validate the data immediately when it arrives to our backend. More specifically, we would like to validate, for example, this course object that we are receiving here in the body of the HTTP TP request. Going back here to our RESTlet interface, this is the JSON payload that we want to validate immediately when this arrives at the backend. So we want to detect that there is a problem in the sequential number field right at the beginning of processing this HTTP request and not close to the end when we might have already triggered some logic that might have accidentally produced some side effect on the database. We want to detect validation errors right at the beginning of the request and we want to produce a more useful response for our client. So we want to make sure that we validate all the errors of the payload and not simply report the first one that triggered the schema validation error. We want to send back a complete error payload specifying all the fields that are in error, any mandatory fields that are missing and specifying what is the exact problem with each of the fields. This way in our front end we are going to be able to display a more useful error message to the user informing him of all the fields that he needs to edit. In order to implement this type of validation logic we are going to be using the class validator package. So as we can see this is validation made easy using TypeScript decorators. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So as we can see here in the examples, we are going to be taking our domain model object interfaces, such as for example, courses, lessons, etc. And we are going to turn them into classes. Then as classes, we will be able to apply decorators to its properties. We have here a series of decorators that allows us to specify that, for example, this number here must be an integer and it must be between zero and 10. We can even validate string patterns using regular expressions such as for example is email we can validate that this is a valid date we can uh, make fields mandatory we can validate the length of a field etc so we have here a very fine grained control over the validation of each of the properties of a given domain model at this moment in the course you already have class validator installed in your workspace so as an example let's apply this to the course type definition Going back here to our project, we are going to go here to the shared folder in the root directory of the project and we're going to click here on course. So as you can see, this is now currently an interface, so we can't apply here decorators to it. So let's then first change it into a class. Now that we have changed it to a class, let's go ahead and add here some decorators to specify the validation messages for each of these fields. For example, this field here is supposed to be an integer. So let's go ahead and add here the isInt decorator from class validator. Now this decorator takes in here a series of configuration parameters. One of them, for example, is the message. So we can specify here a message for when this validation is not met. We're going to add here, for example, the sec no must be numeric. Let's give here a few more examples. For example, the URL property must be a string. So let's add here the is string decorator. And let's make this, for example, an optional property. Let's set in here the always flag to false. This way we can validate course instances that don't have a URL filled in. We can apply similar decorators to the other properties of a course. Let's add here is string to icon URL, also to course list description, to description. Also the long description field should be a string, the category as well. Let's add here the is int decorator to the lesson count property. And let's also validate that the promo field is a boolean using is boolean. 
To complete our example, let's make sure that this field here, ID, is a string as well. Now, because this ID field is also a MongoDB field, let's add in the is Mongo ID decorator as well. Now we are going to come back to this definition of the course class and adapt here the validation decorators. Right now we want to show you how to use these decorators in order to validate an incoming JSON payload. So in order to do that, we are going to need to introduce a new Nest.js concept, which is the notion of pipe. 